Jonan kind of made a plug for this earlier, but at the last Ruby Bright Night, we played around with Gosu. So I signed up for this before uh, I knew it was a failure talk, but to, um, to tie in the failure thing, um, our actual Bright Night project um, was kind of a terrible failure. We tried to do the breakout, we tried to do it all in the command line, um, which we got a little cursor moving at the bottom, but we didn't really have anything else working. Um, one of the other groups had this wonderful project in Gosu, which had um, you know, GUI, had this great interface, um, and it just looked wonderful. And so um, at Epicotus, I'm, I'm a student at Epicotus, so um, the next day we were starting a four-day project where we had to do a um, just some project in Ruby. So our group decided that we were going to build a game and put it in Gosu, um, all in Ruby. So um, having never messed with Gosu, we decided to um, go on Gosu's GitHub, and they have this wonderful tutorial in which you literally just follow, you can copy paste the code in if you want, and you will have a game that you can play, little like Space Invader ship shooting things, um, and side scrolling. So we took what we learned from Gosu, and we made our own game. I can't actually see this because I didn't set that up right. All right, so we made our own game, which the name for it's a little bit cheesy, but we had sorry, I did not duplicate my screen. I get to drag stuff over here. All right, we've got this great original name, and we decided to go with a game that lets us procedurally generate um, environments within Gosu. And we have a little character over on the right side there. And it's kind of you know blending together some, some of the old school Pokemon style games where you walk around enough and something will attack you. And eventually you can try to find your way through the maze and get to the little exit that this time is in the bottom left. So, you know, this is how we decided to use Gosu and create something where you have this window popping up, um, and you know we have an interactive game pretty easily in Ruby. So I was really just coming up to try and introduce Gosu, Gosu to everyone. I don't really have a grand story to tell, um, but if anyone has kind of questions about how it works, um, essentially um, Gosu lets you have a window that displays and it's constantly updating 60 times a second to check and see if anything has changed. So we actually, um, this is a refactor we're gonna have to make, but right now, um, this is tied into an active record database, so every time my character moves, it's actually updating their position in a database, which is going to take a lot more computing than it should. And so if we decide to go forward with this, we're definitely pulling that out um, and just having it stored in a cache. But um, so it's essentially you can write into Gosu all kinds of methods that look at your position, that look at whatever you're doing currently, and you can just set triggers to say this trigger has been switched, so now we need to draw something else um, during the next update cycle. So it really just kind of balances between the update and the draw method that is provided by Gosu, and you can do a lot of stuff with that. So you can create all kinds of different games. I definitely encourage you to go on Gosu's GitHub and play around with the tutorial. Um, you can make some really neat stuff. So, so I don't have questions about how it works. It's kind of an off the cuff thing. So, uh, what you're using Active Record to store the location of the player. Like, what does that actually? What's your database schema actually look like? So, our database we have. Um, we decided to go with entity objects because we were trying to do a little bit forward thinking to where we could have monsters roaming around that would attack you. And so we wanted all of those objects to be trackable um, on creation. And so each object has an X location and a Y location. Um, the map here is a two dimensional array. And so they're just walking around that two dimensional array and we're just changing their X and Y locations. Okay. And so every time you press you know, an arrow key here, um, it will change that location in the database. Then when we look at our draw function, it queries um, to see what the current location is and it draws your player at that location. Okay. So, um, so you have like an entities table with like an X column and a Y column. Yeah, okay. correct. Okay, cool. 
So I, I wouldn't really recommend tying an active record if you want to make this like, you know, a viable thing. Um, we had just done active record the week before, and so we figured why not try to use it. So.